Harry, cover that bar and grill. Talk to the manager. Make sure he knows we got a couple of people in there, right? All right, now, fellas, on the roof. Hey, will you stick with me? I can only say it once. There's a trap door on your roof, Charlie. Make sure that thing is bolted. Frank, the fire escapes. Cover them. Go back there and look them over. Cover them well. And, and move fast, will you, fellas? We, we have an awful lot to do today. Jerry, you know what you have to do. The council's office, huh? Add a boy. Now, boys on the steps. Hey, fellas, on the side of the building, there's a door. Go check it out. That's it. Oh, boy. The clothing store, Mike. <laughs> Talk to the super of all these buildings. Make sure the doors are guarded. Patsinski, I am glad you're on crowd control. Thank you, Captain. If I had a few more officers like you, maybe my ulcer would feel a little better. Mrs. Topola, how are you? Imagine Alexander Kudesko, the voice of Lithuanian freedom in our own neighborhood, Nick. Isn't it wonderful? It is wonderful, yes. <laughs> Just wonderful. Officer Nick Brodinski, American of Litvanian extraction. 15 years on the force. Unblemished record. Winner of the Medal of Valor. Yeah, it's great, Leonard. So what's the problem? Well, the problem could be Alexander Cadesco. Oh, you mean that uh, rider that defected to the West? He got out of Litvinia by the skin of his teeth and then barely escaped two assassination attempts in Paris and London. And now... Don't tell me he's coming here. In two days. <laughs> State is very uptight about his security. I can imagine. Now, the day after he arrives, Cadesco is scheduled to address a rally for Litvanian freedom. And Rodinsky has been assigned by the PD to crowd control. All right, so you got a Lithuanian American cop protecting a Lithuanian patriot. So you should feel right at home. What's the problem? Hmm? No problem. Except for this. Three weeks ago, Rodinsky took his vacation. He told his superiors he was going camping in the Sierras. But then he popped up in the Lithuanian capital. These pictures were taken by an intersect agent in Lithuania. I take it you haven't interrogated Rodinsky yet, huh? No. If he's involved in some kind of a plot to assassinate Gadesco, he'd only lie. But I do want to put under surveillance. All righty, how do you want to work it? Well, first of all, you have to get your hair cut. Oh, no. Oh, wait a minute. You're kidding me, Leonard. Uh huh. We've already put your name on the Academy's graduation list. Academy? What Academy? The Police Academy. Officer Sam Casey. Man, it's just what the world's been waiting for an invisible cop. Assigned to me. I just wanted to meet you before a roll call. Nick Rodinsky. Glad to meet you, Nick. Sam Casey. Sam. 
How are things at the old academy, huh? Still teaching by the book? Oh, man, haven't they always? <laughs> you know, the only way that the book would work, Sam, is if the people on the streets were a bunch of averages and statistics, and they're not. They're human beings. Sounds like you like to do things your way, huh? You bet. Sam, you're going to be in for some surprises when you ride with me. Come on, let's go. <laughs> This neighborhood, Sam. A lot of good people here from the old country, from Litvania. My parents came from there, so I just kind of fit right in, you know? You ever get back there? Where, Litvania? Yeah. Oh, no, no. The farthest I've ever been from the U.S. of A. has been... Do you want it? <laughs> Sam, pull in here. Sister Paula, keep calm. Oh. What's going on? Nick, I'm so glad you're here. I've got to talk to you. Well. Alone. Uh, be right back. scared they're back again they're back again are you positive absolutely faces like that you do not forget i'm afraid i know, I know. it's going to be all right you just tell me where they are they're in ernie's place right now all right i'll handle it i promise you thank you very much What's up? Come on, get in, I'll tell you. This car, Sam, it belongs to the Rose brothers, Frank and Rudy. Yeah, so what's the problem? So they used to have a nice little protection racket here in the neighborhood. I figured I got rid of them. Mrs. Topola said she saw them both going in here. Let's go. Listen, fellas, please. Please. What's going on here? Uh, Ernie here. He just slipped and fell into his display case. Right, Ernie? Yeah, I slipped. Ernie, we can't bust these punks unless you talk. Now, come on, stand up to them now! Otherwise, it's gonna go on forever. Sir, you say the word, they're out of here. <laughs> For how long? They'll be out on bail before nightfall. What will we hear? 24 hours a day. Listen to me, you lousy rotten creep. I ought to take this badge off and shove it down your throat. Officer, officer. You don't want to violate my civil rights, do you? See what I'm up against? Yeah. Shopkeepers are so terrorized, they won't even testify. We could just get one of them to stand up, the rest of them might follow. That's too bad. Sam. Look at this. This hot shot here, he's in a tollway zone, isn't he? No, 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 they're not in a tollway zone. He will be. It's not exactly legal, you know. I know that, but it sure makes me feel good, Sam. I better call for the tow truck, huh, Sam? I guess maybe you might. This is one Adam 4-2 requesting a tow truck. 
Say nothing to the officers. And I'm grateful, Ernie. That's why I'm only gonna charge you 50 bucks a week. Fifty dollars? I can't afford that. Oh, Ernie. Mm. Now can you afford it, Ernie? My best candy jar. And what are you gonna do? Shove me. Can you imagine that little nothing, Shovey? What are you doing here? Get him! I didn't do nothing. I didn't do nothing. Oh. 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 Hey! He must be one of them karate guys. Let's get out of here. Told him to stand up to those punks, and he did. I guess you finally got to him, huh? Yeah, maybe I did. How about that, Sam? <laughs> <laughs> All right. One Adam Four Two. We are going on Code Seven. Thank you. Out. What's a Code Seven? You really are green, aren't you? That one's in a book. Code Seven. Code Seven. Code Seven is lunch. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I think Radinsky's new partner's permanent. Well, if he's been assigned for training, he's probably temporary. If. He's been alone all this time. And they give him a partner a few days before the operation. I don't like it. So, just take your pictures. We'll check them out. He takes me aside, he says, do not underestimate the family quarrel. Because there have been more cops hurt on domestic calls than any other kind. Of course, in those days, I was, uh, well, I was really a hot shot. Listen, I was as green as you, Sam. I might have been even a little greener, if that's possible. <laughs> hey, come on. All right, listen to me. So, I go barging in the house, and there they all are. A man, two women, throwing things, screaming, yelling at each other. Unbelievable. I say to the man, I say, what's the fight about? He says, it's about my mother-in-law. All my fights are about my mother-in-law. So now I'm going to use a little psychology. So I turn around and I say, with all your years of life and experience, you certainly can discuss this maturely, right? So what's wrong with that? I said it to the wife. <laughs> now, wait a minute, I want you to look at this. Sam, right here, you can see what you hit me in the head. I mean it, look, guys, look. Huh? <laughs> American nursing home. What's this? A friend of mine just got out of the hospital. I'd like to see how she is. Stay with the car in case we get a call? Yeah, no problem. Be right here. In case we do, just give a honk, huh? I'll come right out. Gotcha. <clears throat> oh, 
right, officer. You know where it is. Thank you. Officer Rodinsky, right on time. Is she awake? Yes. Hi there. Soon. His girlfriend, huh? What's her name? Her name? Come on, Leonard, I don't know her name. I don't want to pry, that's personal. She's sick, he visits her, that's all. It's... It has nothing to do with the case. Sam, check it out. Look, Leonard, I'll stick with a man, but where do we draw the line? We don't, not in this business, and you know it. You talk like that, you sound like you're getting emotionally involved in your assignments. All right, maybe I am. But I'll tell you something, Leonard. After driving around a couple of days with this guy, he's one heck of a cop. I've got a surprise for you. There wasn't time when we got married. Oh, Nick. For Mrs. Nick Wadinsky. Look, I appreciate your position, Sam, but Cadesco is arriving today. Find out the girl's name. Yeah, Leonard. It's only the sedation. It's only the sedation. Nick. Don't worry about a thing. Everything's under control. Hey, Nick. It's under control, isn't it? Stay with the car, Sam. Hey, man, I had to stretch my legs. What happens if we got a call and the sergeant drives by? Then what? All right, all right, take it easy. I'm sorry. Hey, look, Nick, is, uh, is there anything wrong? I mean, besides your girlfriend. No, no, uh, Sam, I'm sorry. I don't mean to involve you in my personal problems. Hey, man, that's what partners are for. You got a problem. Lay it on me. How was your girlfriend, huh? About the same. Mr. Cadesco, I've read all your books. Ah. Reading is one thing, understanding is another. I, uh, for example, cannot understand this uh, memo your staff has given me. 
There must be uh, some mistake. No, Mr. Cadesco. I recommended that you do not attend that rally tomorrow. But it is the principal reason for my visit to your country. I needn't have to remind you that you narrowly escaped two attempts on your life in Europe, both in public places. Like the rally. All the more reason why I must attend. To stay away from a rally. For freedom in Lithuania would be surrendering to the enemies of that freedom. But your safety... Is not important. It is one thing to uh, put brave words of rebellion on paper, Dr. Lawrence. It's quite another thing to speak them. No. I will not be intimidated by the cowards who control my country. Uh, Mr. Cadesco, your enemies will not give up easily. Neither do I. And tomorrow, when I speak for the captive millions in Lithuania, it will be the government there who is afraid. And not Alexander Kudasko. prepare for the worst and hope it doesn't happen. He's a brave man. Yeah. That's what worries me. Well, are we ready? All set. Let's try it. My face wet? Yes. It's such a fine mist, you didn't even feel it. Good. Then either will Cadesco. When he smells your bouquet, it won't be filled with water, but with this. Cadesco has to inhale this poison for it to work. Christina, you have to be very close to him when you spray. Do you understand? I will be, darling. Thanks to Rodinsky. Christina, here's the film I shot yesterday. This man with Rodinsky. Don't you know who he is? Joseph? Any of you? He's an intersect agent. Are you certain? Of course I am. You're gonna have to talk to Rodinsky. Transferred from patrol, huh? Oh, sure. A lot of times. I don't like a desk job. I'd rather be in the streets. One Adam 4-2. One Adam 4-2. Go ahead. Officer Rodinsky, we just took a personal message for you. Call the Lithuanian nursing home. They said it was urgent. Message received. Out. Sam, that phone booth is pull over next to it, will you? All right. Anything wrong is Lisa. Lisa's fine, Nick. You have other problems. Your new partner is an intersect agent. No, there must be some mistake. No mistake. Then they know about the plan. We'll have to call it off. Oh, don't be foolish. If they knew, you'd be in custody already. No, they may suspect something, but they don't know. And they won't find out. Just what does that mean? Sam Casey has to be eliminated tonight. No, you can't do that. There's going to be an investigation. There'll be questions. It'll look like an accident, an officer killed in the line of duty. No, I won't be a part of that. Oh? Well, then, maybe I should tell you the latest news about Lisa. We've moved her, Nick, to a much more secure place. Now. What were you saying? Everything okay? Just give me one more minute, would you please? Sure. All right, what you were saying, if you think it's best. 
Tonight at 10, a burglar alarm will go off at the Chandler Export Building at Hart and Ashworth Streets. You be in the area. When you respond to the alarm, make sure Casey goes in the delivery entrance. We'll take care of the rest. Have you got that? Yes, I got it. Remember, the delivery entrance. How is she? She had a little relapse. Nothing serious. Nick, are you sure? Hey, come on, man. If there's something bothering you, come on, come on, tell me. Spit it Sam, out. do me a favor. Will you get off my case? It doesn't even concern you. Look at this. Nick's girlfriend, Lisa Korlovich, a.k.a. Lisa Corval, is a Litvanian national. Formerly on staff of Litvanian Trade Mission, Los Angeles, California. Recall to Litvania? Visa revoked of May of this year? What you doing in that nursing home? Say, Nick, uh, maybe we ought to get moving, huh? Just relax and drink your coffee. Two blocks from here. One Adam four two. Roger on that code three. Yeah, come on, man. Let's get going. All right. I go around to the front. Let's go.
Are you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. Nico, buddy, you've got a lot of explaining to do. I said, who do you work for? Take it, boy. Well, he's not going to talk, Radinsky. Will you? Why not? From the top. I first met Lisa when she was working at the Lafania trade mission. After just a couple of weeks together, we knew we were in love and we planned to get married. Lisa had to get some papers from her consulate here before that could happen, so she went to get them. I didn't see her for two days. Then I found out that they sent her back to the old country rather than let her marry an American. Well, that's why you lied about your vacation then. You went back to Latvania to get Lisa. Yes. That's no crime, Leonard. But, gentlemen, you see, Lisa and I were secretly married in Latvania. Then I found out I couldn't get her out of the country. That's when Joseph and Christina showed up, right? Yeah. They were pretty cute, those two. They said they were in the underground. In the Save Latvania movement. Also, that they had connections to get Lisa to the United States. I wanted to believe them so much I couldn't see them for what they were. So I went back alone. I waited. Sure enough, they called. They said that Lisa was here. And she was safe in a place that wouldn't ask any questions about passports, visas. The nursing home. The nursing home. She went from one prison right into another one. Now, they had her and they had me right where they wanted us. They told me that they were going to kill Lisa if I didn't help them assassinate Cadesco. Help them how? I was to be on crowd duty here at the rally and then get my final instructions from them. And Lisa would be freed. Well, there's not much to go on. There's no other course. I'm going to cancel that rally no matter what Cadesco says. Please don't do that, sir. And they'll know I talked. <laughs> Very funny. I'm sure they realize right now that I have. Well, hold on a minute. Maybe they don't know. The only one they could have told him is Carl. We've got him on ice. Carl, what's he got? To do? What? What if your blackmailers heard that I was killed in that gunfight tonight? A fake news bulletin? Sure, why not? That way they'd go ahead with tomorrow just as planned. Only we would have Nick here as our trump card. And you could get them when they come after me, right? Do you know what you're saying? Do you know how risky it is? You might fail. We won't, Leonard. That rally starts at 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, and a man's life is in danger. So is a woman's, Leonard. Sam. Leonard, I'm telling you, we can make this thing happen. We can keep them from killing Cadesco and get Nick's wife back at the same time. Bradbury, this is Driscoll. I want a story planted in every newspaper wire service, and broadcasting stations. Officer Samuel Casey and a burglary suspect died today in the Chandler Import Building. Sam, you think it'll work? We'll make it work, partner.
body's not open yet. Negative, Leonard. Let me know as soon as they show.
Let's get out of here. Thank you, Mrs. Depola. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye-bye. You know, Nick, Leonard tells me there's gonna be a congressional investigation of that espionage ring we busted. Now, you know Congress. I mean, that kind of thing could go on for months. Maybe even years. Huh? And I'm afraid an important witness like Lisa may not be allowed to leave the country. Probably forever. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for everything. We'll never be able to pay you back, Sam. Hey, what are you talking about, huh? It's me that owes you. I mean, look at all that police work you taught me, huh? I really don't know who taught who. There were a few things that you did. I'll never be able to figure them out. But I want you to know that you can always come back and ride patrol with me. Partner. Thanks, partner. <laughs> 